Amazon's New World. Ha yeah, it's a hands-on sandbox MMO. I, I, I am... I am genuinely excited about this game. And I don't know, am I stupid for being excited about it? Like, I don't know, it seems... Th this seems fine. I mean, the graphics looks good, the UI is really clean, uh, everything about this looks good. I, I don't like how zoomed in you are, though. That That's kind of bothersome. So that's like the, uh, the map there. Looks like Ark. Well, I don't know if it's an arc ripoff or not. I mean, okay, so now they've got some people here. So where's the combat? When does this come out? When does this game actually come out? I'm not sure. Uh, to that 2030? Okay. Okay, yeah, I kind of thought so. I mean, if they have a playable demo this early, the odds are it'll be out maybe in like a year or so. That's what I would say. Wait, is there any combat at all in this game? Oh, oh, okay, here's combat. Wow, this guy's really not very good with the spear. Okay, yeah, the damage looks pretty stupid. Yeah, this is... Uh... I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't know about this. I mean... It looks all right, but I wouldn't say if this is like a super exciting thing. Wait, it's flickering? Wait, what? what, what what's going on? Wait, what do you mean it's flickering? Oh, oh, uh, I have to close this and uh, reopen. Oh, no, it's just a character select screen. Uh, it's a bug. Sorry about that, guys. Let me go ahead and restart the game and make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, it happened before. Watch the Hightail trailer. No, dude, the high trail, Hightail game was fucking stupid. I, I don't want to look at that, okay? Yeah, basically the 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 uh, the character select screen for whatever fucking reason it doesn't really work very well whenever you're doing it on OBS. So I've just got to log back in. That's why it happened. Okay, let's see here. So I mean, I I think this game is pretty cool. I I do think so, and the graphics look really good. It looks real and immersive in a way. I just don't really know like how much customization and like what the real depth of the game is going to be and how fulfilling that depth is going to be to reach. And so it's hard really for me to say. Okay. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, watch Ultimate Weapon? Ultimate World? Uh, I don't know about that, dude. Check Conan Exiles if you like this one. I saw... I, I think the only reason why people liked Conan Exiles is because they were able to make their characters naked. Like, that's literally all there is to it. And uh, everything else besides that doesn't really matter. I, I'll look at the Final Fantasy thing and, and see what that's like, too. Was it Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, end boss? Like, uh, is it like end boss? Like, what What should I look up in terms of... Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. This is a cinematic. Oh, there's the players. Okay, so they're in An Orlando, and the giant thing with a huge fucking tail just knocked it off. Okay. Alright, let's see some combat. What do you guys think? Phone game? Alright, you know what? Let, let's let's go ahead and let's see some combat first before I, I make that decision. Okay, let, let's just... Alright. Here we go. I don't know, guys. Wait, they're playing it on the PS4? Does that even matter, though? Like, if, if I click and I watch this one instead, would that even make a difference? Because I feel like it's just going to be the exact same thing. Uh, let's see. So, it's or yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be the same boss. I mean, maybe the graphics will be slightly better on, on PC, but it just seems like this is like a master, massive clusterfuck. Holy shit. 
This is insane. Like, wow. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd be into this, dude. Like, I, I'm sorry to say, I'm just, like, not really into this. Uh, watch Wild Refugee Exp I, I watched that before, man. I, I just got done watching that. Literally just got done watching it. 2.5 second GCD. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, guys. I, I'm not a... I'm just not really sold on this game. Like, the combat and everything... It just seems fucking stupid to me. Like, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't know. Like, I'll look at this video and see if it's the same. Guild Wars 2? Okay, I'll look at Guild Wars 2, then we'll do the Orgrimmar raid, okay? Oh, it's the same boss! Okay, yeah, this is the same thing. All right, we'll get the Guild Wars 2, and then we'll do the uh, the Orgrimmar raid. Okay, what the hell is it called? Um, Guild Wars... Like, what should I look? Guild Wars 2 raid boss? Okay, uh, which one should I look at that's that's good? Uh, Thordan. Wait, what's Thordan? I'm not seeing Thordan. Delume. Okay. Alright, this is Guild Wars 2. Okay. Oh, you guys have that one? All right, let's see the boss. Yeah, it's on me. It's... Where's the boss? I must have missed mine, I guess. Okay, there it is. Hmm. It's yeah. not that bad. I mean, it, it, to, to be fair, it. it's not that bad. The numbers are really silly. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, this... I, I don't know, man. Like, pay to win game? Wait, is it actually a pay to Is Guild Wars Shackle a pay to win game? I didn't even fucking know that. Sir, sir. No? Well, then why is everybody saying that? Like, I, well, it's hard for me to know, like, what's actually true and what's not. Because I, I haven't played any of these games. Like, I've pretty much only played WoW as, like, an MMO. Like, Black Desert is literally the only game that I've played besides WoW. Like, it's an MMO. So, all of this is very different to me. You can't pay for anything. Um, Blaze Raider Final Fantasy 14. Shackle. Should you play Guild Wars 2 in 2019? Should you play Guild Wars 2 in... That's a good one. There. Probably not. Let me just... Hello, everybody. Let's try and answer the question, should I play Guild Wars 2 in 2019? Yeah. My honest opinion is that you should play it. But let me try to explain my perspective. Pigs fly in WoW too. If you pay $25. So I'm not really sure if that's the best way to describe it. On what I think influences this. Wait. First off, Guild Wars 2 has a free-to-play option which will allow you to play the core version of the game. This only has a handful of limited... Oh, what does it say here? As stated in the video, I am an arena net partner. I'm assuming that's the people that make Guild Wars 2. However, I was not paid to make this video... I made this video to answer a question, not to fulfill a sponsorship. These opinions are mine and mine alone. Okay. Okay, l l let's talk some real. If you're going to have a video and you're a partner with these people, in acting in best interest, you would not make a video that would say negative things about them. Right? So I, I don't necessarily think that that's entirely you know, convincing. I mean, you guys you see what I'm only saying? only have access to eight of the classes and won't be able to play Revenant. Yeah, you it's a conflict of interest. You have access to one map region, and that consists of Central Tyria. Okay. There are also some chat restrictions. If you want to see all of them, I will leave a link down below in the description. Oh, come you on! bear in mind that this is basically an infinite trial. Free to play okay. allows you to play the game to level 80 and access the core classes. You right. can play through the full original story that's good that and access it's free to the play. content that was made available to players who first bought the game when it was originally released. If you buy the expansions Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, you will unlock two whole new regions, the Heart of Maguma and the Crystal Desert, and this will this come with like, a wow. plethora of content to tackle. Here on the left, we have the Heart of Maguma maps, which have a good amount of events in them. 
And then here in the bottom right hand side of the map, we have the path. People, thanks for your 10. I don't know if I want to watch an OSRS video. There are also events here, but arguably not as fun. One big selling point about these maps is that they appear to be the largest in the game, or they feel like it. The expansions come with two whole new storylines. Man, like, really, like, who gives a fuck about this? Like, I mean, yeah, the, the, the map is really big. OSRS. God, guys, why are people so into OSRS? I don't know what got my stream into it. It's crazy. Access to six raid wings. You gain gliding from Heart of Thorns and mounts from Path of Fire. Jesus Christ. The mounts in Guild Wars 2 are definitely one of their best features. They are not pointless. They have their own skills. Oh, what, what the fuck? You can fuck? also upgrade these skills via the mastery point system. That's badass. This is something that you will continue to unlock throughout the expansions. Okay, so you're the riding around on nine tails. also unlock the class Revenant. This is something you would not have access to in the free-to-play version. I mean, the combat looks okay. And finally, we have the Living World episodes. I will build on this that? later on. But the Living World is an ongoing series that just gets updated periodically. The way that I look at it, the game stops at level 80 until you buy the expansions. Okay. There is so much content in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire that you very easily run out of things to do in the core game. That said, ArenaNet do release regular content for free, and sometimes there is a decent wait in between. Okay. However, Guild Wars 2 does not charge a subscription service. And therefore, I think it's viable for there to be a little bit of a wait in between each release. That said, there are some semi-regular balance updates, as well as a new raid wing approximately... All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about playing an MMO that's basically dead. Right? It's like, how many people do you think really play Guild Wars 2? Now, I, I, I want to go ahead and I want to kind of talk about something that's really big. Okay, and a lot of people might disagree with this, but I think that it's very true. The reason why people are so concerned about WoW dying is because they don't want to have their time invested in the game. They want to have as many people as possible see their accomplishments in the game. That's why people care about WoW, like, doing well or not doing well. Because the more people that play the game, those are th those are all more people that can inspect them in the city and be like, Wow, bro, that's awesome that you have this item. That's cool. Guild Wars 2 has millions of players. Well, yeah, I'm sure over the years it's probably had millions of players. But how many people are actively participating and playing the game on a regular basis? I would say that it's probably, probably less than 100,000. Like, and, and this is just like a random guess of mine, but I would say probably less than 100,000. Okay, and uh, that's, oh, wrong. What is it, 150? Like, I mean, what I'm saying is there's a lot, there's not really that many people that are playing the game. And uh, yeah, about the same as Final Fantasy 14 Millions now? Do I have to look this up again? Like, are you fucking serious? How many people play, fuck, I can't even type this. Uh, how many people, fuck, people actively play guild wars 2 the game celebrated over 11 million players total last year and doesn't seem to be showing signs of flag uh, of flagging okay how many of us are how many of us are there what are the actual numbers how many active players are there is there any way for anyone to tell Guild Wars 2, I mean, between 1.5 to 3 million active users. There's no way. I don't believe it. There's no way. There, there, there's no way. Like... I, I, I just don't, I don't believe it. Because if you look at like every single, this might sound dumb, but the amount of people that are actively consuming content for a game, I think is indicative of how many people play the game. There are not a lot of people that are actively consuming Guild Wars 2 content. What? Am I wrong? Who watches YouTube? Well, you're watching it right now. Wait, two point no. This no. Let me look at. Uh, let's look at the Guild Wars two Reddit. Okay, 
like uh, let me go ahead and uh i'll i'll pull that up in a second uh guild guild wars to reddit how many people are actively on the guild wars 2 reddit Two thousand people wow that's actually more than i thought holy shit okay let's compare this to the uh to the wow reddit Okay, let's see. 6,000 people. Actually, that's surprising. I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised there's that many people on there. Hmm. One point five million people like I mean, but how does that how does that translate to have just like such low engagement? But I mean, I, I just, I, that, that's, that's crazy to me that there's so low engagement for these games while at the same time, check OSRS Reddit. Okay. Let me look. Uh, OSRS Reddit. There's more on, on, on RuneScape. 's bad logic I mean like I, I I feel like the amount of people that are actively engaged in a game on third party websites is a relative indicator of how well the game is doing like that's not that's not bad logic that's just common sense i i uh, i i I um I understand that whenever I looked up Jesus Christ th this this post right here I don't even know what the fuck this is but this post right here has more upvotes than anything that's on the WoW subreddit a and look at Classic WoW w look at this and, and how many people in Classic WoW two thousand so Classic WoW what is Classic WoW as popular as Guild War oh. there's no no. That's different because Classic Wild's not out yet. But. I just like. <sighs> There's a website that tracks the amount of online players for RuneScape at any given time. What website is that? I want to see it. What website is it? Uh, uh, was it the official uh, official Reddit? A main page. OS, OS, RS. Okay, how many people are playing right now? Did I... How many people? Were, were, oh, oh, I see it right there. 97,000. That's not that many. Like, I mean, man, dude, like, I just, I, I mean, ultimately once a year. And of course, their living world seasons. Included in this is some quality of life items and fashion item releases as well. Okay. These consist of mount skins, weapon skins, infinite salvage kits, extra bag slots, and then different types of particle effect infinite tools. Those That's will make cute. more sense once you've actually bought a good few amount of mining tools and so on and so forth. And the best part is that with gold to gem conversion, you don't have to... Somebody said a WoW private server is 10,000 right now. Regler, 
What private server has 10,000 active players right now at this exact moment? Because I, I don't know any of them that do. Wait, Warmain actually does? I don't believe that. Because doesn't Warmain sell gear? No, 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 no. Here, here, I'm about to, I'm about to drop a, I'm about to drop a big IQ. This is a big IQ. Get ready for it. They sell gear. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Listen to this. The more people, as I said, the larger the server is, the higher the perceived value of getting a really badass item is because you get to show it to more people. So imagine having a private server and there's only one person playing on it or 50 people playing on it. That gear is going to be uh, I, I guess like comparatively less valuable than if you're playing on a server that has 10,000 people on it. So in Warmain's example, it's actually in their best interest to say that they have more people playing on that server because it artificially increases the perceived value of them selling the gear to the players. They. If you want to play it, no. No, I don't believe it. Here, here, here's a, here's a, here's a, here, here's a, here's a, here's a thing. Whenever coincidence and personal gain converge, it's never a coincidence. Spend another penny on this game after you buy it. You can if you wish, but arguably you can get everything you want just by playing the game. Okay. ArenaNet's prime target market is the gamer who does not want to be left behind and feel that they need to grind for weeks just to achieve their goals. Oh, that, that, that you seems are able familiar. You reach level 80 by playing any game mode you wish, with the exception to some free-to-play limitations. Okay. If you wish to do the standard method and just grind out heart completion, go for it. However, if you're a player versus player... Man, am I going to have to level up a heart in another game? Like I just hit, I just hit Azerite level fifty. Like I don't think that I can handle another one. Like I, I mean, really, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Fanatic, you are able to go in at level two and just start playing through your reward tracks. Lights up is five thousand. These tracks That's a lot. take your PvP experience and reward you with items periodically. Okay. You will occasionally be granted a tome of knowledge, which is equal to one level gain. Upon usage of this item, you will gain one character level. PvP in Guild Wars 2 is played in one... Rare candy. I mean, two game modes. These consist of Conquest and Stronghold. Bro, like, let's get to some fucking, world like... World. In Conquest, All right, we're gonna you just skip to a node ownership and play five versus five. Okay. Essentially, capture point deathmatch. So and it's a Rathy Basin. Where you use supply to request NPCs who break down walls and eventually kill the main NPC. Let's see. Yeah, I want to see what this is. How is it so far? Stronghold is do a rework and it's yeah. Not I, I want to. Really I'm going to go to how PvP is it so far. It's going to skip ahead. How a bit. is it so far for you? If you are an ex World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV okay, or go. whatever player, you may be used to the item level grind and constant desire to be relevant by farming random drops, which may never come. <laughs> Man, shut the fuck up. Everything's this fine. is something you love and need in your MMO of choice. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 will not offer you that. Guild Wars okay. 2 will always be played at your own pace. If you want to leave and come back when the Living World episodes release, go for it. Some people play every single day, others don't. They make their own content. They form communities and play the game the way they want to. The limitations of the- God, dude, like just the way that they fucking- Oh, you play the game you want to play, like, I, I, it's, it, it's so fucking casual, man. Like, no, you don't play the game the way that you want to play. Fucking log on, and there's a list of things that you got to do. You got to get to level 60. You got to get your fucking gear. You got to get your fire resist. You got to get your attunement. You got to get into Molten Core. You got to kill Ragnaros. You got to kill fucking BWL. You got to kill Nefarian. You got to go into AQ40. You got to go into Maradon and farm the gear for AQ40. And you got to go one, two, three, four, five. And you have to fucking farm that shit out. And if you don't want to do it, if you don't want to level, if you don't want to do it the right way, oh, I just want to PvP? Fine. Enjoy being level 10 for your whole fucking life. Because that's all you're ever going to be. And I, I, it's, there's no structure to the game. Like, then how do you determine who's good and who's bad if there's no structure to the game? Like, I mean, that's the best part about games that have a lot of structure is that you know who's fucking better than you and who you're better than. You know where you stand on the totem pole, in the feeding chain, in the food, in the food pyramid. Raids in this game is that there is only a single tier of difficulty. 
that story. Said, yeah, there are fucking... objects called challenge modes, which increase the difficulty of some encounters, not all of them. These okay. add additional health and additional mechanics. All right, let's Raid see it. Do it. Drop exclusive skins and achievements that can provide you with exclusive items. Do it. That said, due to the lack of gear treadmill, all of the previous raid wings are still as relevant as the most recent. This means that none of the bosses actually become outdated. They remain equally as difficult as they were the first time that you did them. And the only thing that improves that is your experience with the bosses. As previously mentioned, there are currently six raid wings with another one in development, hopefully coming in 2019. So that means currently there are 22 encounters with 16 bosses. I, I don't know. I mean, no class rolls, no gear progression, no end game. Like, this seems like, this just seems so, like, massively open-ended that I don't feel like I could, I could really think that I was better than somebody in this game. I mean, this is like, and, and if I can't do that, what's the point? Massively casual? Well, it, it is. It does seem like it is massively casual, and, and I don't want... I, I I want to play a game where I can invest all day into the game and I will be better than somebody that doesn't. Now, I think that there's a limit to that. I don't like the infinitely scaling Azeride power and the artifact power, but I, I want to be better than somebody because I put more time into the game. And I think skill and time invested should play maybe not equal parts, but they should both play a part in like my character's power. The encounters count as actual raid engagements, but they are not bosses in themselves. Okay. This includes things like escorting an NPC from one side to another whilst defending it. Each boss can drop ascended weapons and gear, and it's a pretty good method of making gold as well. Now let's quickly recap on the Living World. The Living World story is Stupid a regular release pet. schedule of ArenaNet, where they provide the player base with a story which is separate to the storylines contained in the core game as well as Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. No, I, I don't you care will, about however, this. You however, need the expansions to play the story. I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't care about the story. one at a time and typically arrive with a new map, new skins, and new achievements. This is... In a recent case, they included a new mount with one of the episodes. You can find Ascended gear in these episodes, whilst also enjoying an ongoing lore saga that may or may not hold your attention. And lastly, there are replayable dungeons in Guild Wars 2 known as Fractals. They range from level 1 to 100 and require a special resistance in order to progress. Each level increases in difficulty. Okay. This special resistance is known as Agony. Agony can be socketed into your Ascended gear. And the best bit is, you can even do some of these in Challenge mode. And okay. these really are hard. There are also things called Mislock Instabilities. These are essentially affixes that will attempt to make the fact- I want to say something. I actually don't like infinitely scaling content. I think that you should be able to like it. And, and I think Path of Exile, outside of Delve, does this really well. If you see some dude whose dick is actually the same length as my forearm here, and he goes up to the chamber of the Minotaur, and he just fucking goes like this, and he's dead? Oh, wow. That's fucking awesome. That's amazing. And a shaper, yeah, shapers per second DPS, exactly. That's what I want to see. And, and like, the infinitely scaling stuff, I, I, I've just, it's like kind of, it's not really that cool. I want to be able to get to a point into the game, I want to be able to break the game. Like, literally just break the game. Like, whenever I play an ARPG, my goal is to walk around while casting nothing and still clear the raid. Or still clear the map or the dungeon or the rift or whatever. I want to be able to put in the least effort possible and get the biggest results imaginable. And you can't do that in infinitely scaling stuff. Like, I, I'm just not a fan. They're not infinite. Oh, they're not. Okay. They only go up to 100. Your That's what's going to These are on a rotation and more of them apply to your dungeons as you progress through the higher but the tiers. Gear, but the gear is going to be the, the same level, though, right? There can only be three at once. 
And as always, here is a list of that on the wiki. Oh, the affixes, okay. I should note that these are not going to be available to you until you hit level 80. Okay. Fractals can reward you with exclusive golden fractal Damn, you've got to be fast for this. And also with ascended gear via rare drops. This is cool. Many players farm these on a regular and daily well, basis. This is badass. Then again, you might say, well, wow. my friend has been playing this for a while and I'm going to be way behind where they it's are. Sped up, oh. But Guild Wars 2 have already thought of that. As a maximum level, you can go out of your way to the low-level areas and you can scale to their content. Yeah. This means that your friends can come and play with you as a brand new player and they will gain something from it as well. There is also a benefit in the sense that you do hit a lot harder than these new characters, so you can farm those mobs like having very, very quickly and efficiently. It that also gives you a reason to go back and farm some achievements. So at this point, I think I've covered all the bases. Okay. I've covered free to play, paid versions of the game, the combat system, PVP, World v World, fractals, and uh, roots. Man. I think that I've presented you with enough information to enable you to formulate an answer. I want to go ahead and I want to I want to respond to something that somebody said in chat because I think that that that's the way that I feel too. There's zero vertical progression. I, I if all of the raid bosses drop the same tier of gear that means that you're basically doing like imagine doing wow uh, check world versus world we'll look at that in a minute okay let me let me respond to this um that's exactly what guild wars do if i it's like imagine if nax molten core bwl and aq40 all dropped basically the same gear like the classic would suck like let's be real it would just suck i mean like if you're gonna play max level it would just suck so I really don't think like that's good. Like not having vertical progression seems like it's really kind of, it makes the whole thing meaningless to me. Ultimately, if you are somebody who can relax and not demand content every week and create your own content with friends and do regular daily completions, you may be happy in Guild Wars 2. May. I personally play PvP every single day on stream for about five to eight hours. And to me, it's enjoyable working to improve wow. and get closer to the top rankings. For others, it's about speed clearing raid bosses or winning some of the player made raid tournaments. Some people collect all the skins and some just want to have all the gold that they possibly could. To date, okay. I've put in 3,400 hours in two years and there are some that have put in over 12,000 in the last six. That's a good start. The game will be what you make of it. However, I genuinely do believe that you should buy the expansions. If you wait for a sale, perfect. That's fine by me. Yeah, but I don't the think money they have is definitely battles. worth your while. Now, here's my chance to sell out a little bit. I do have links in the description you could use to both try the game and buy the game if you like. Oh, he has a Simply referral because code. I am an ArenaNet partner. I wanted to make this video because people kept asking the question on Reddit, and I just wanted to answer the question in a video format. Okay. If you dude. guys do have any further questions, find me on my Twitch stream. Okay. Thank dude. you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. The the WVW I I I do want to see that go was it Guild Wars 2 PVP because I think this is like the saving grace of Guild Wars 2 isn't it Let's see here um I'll try and find one that's filter let's do it based off of views sort by view count Okay so what is this here Guardian PVP Ranger PVP Mesmer PP. Yeah, this doesn't really seem particularly exciting here. Uh, let's see. World versus world. Okay. W. Was it W? V. W? Okay. So, which one should I look at? I, I guess I'll just kind of try to find one that seems like it. Nice. Um, find one that seems pretty big. Or like high scale. World versus world is dead content. Well, yeah, I mean, if there's nobody's playing the game, then it's going to be problematic and hard to get a group. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to click the first one, all right? Wait, actually, you know what? This is Guardian. I think Guardian is the, uh, is the, uh, um, it's like the, uh, the warrior. So I want to watch this one. Okay, so we've got Varian Ren sitting in his, uh, uh, in his throne. All right. Time by Hans Zimmer. I'm pretty sure that's the song. Wow. So he just killed that guy. I don't know, guys. 
I mean, Warrior versus Guardian Paladin. Let me see. I'll, I'll find it. Uh, Guild Wars PvP. Warrior versus Guardian. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything here. All right, Guild Wars 2 duels. Let's see if there's anything, uh, any good duels. Uh, Zerg battles are epic. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm just all like, like, whenever I see this combat, this doesn't, like, really super excite me. Let me move forward a little bit. Oh, my God, dude. Okay. The only thing I like about this is it has the same hairstyle as my, uh, my Warcraft character. Yeah, th this is kind of silly to me. Yeah. This isn't big enough. This isn't big enough PvP. The numbers, the, the numbers don't look good to me. I don't like the numbers. You have no idea what the fuck's even going on here. Zerg? Wait, what is this here? Zerg. Type Zerg. Okay. PvP Zerg. Okay. Large-scale Zerg. Okay. Oh, wow. What's this? Wait, how, how have I watched five seconds of this before? Okay. Well, great. We'll see it. Oh, I watched this on stream, didn't I? Like, this is a long time ago I saw this. Okay, so as you can see here, um, let me explain basically what's going on. So you've got, um, so you've got the purple, okay, that's good, all right. Um, okay, so here, okay, okay. Yeah, I have no idea. Really have no fucking idea. This is pretty cool. Like, uh, all right, this actually is pretty cool. Um. It's a six-year-old video. I'm surprised this person had a computer good enough to have this video six years ago. That's actually pretty impressive. Just a second. Let me try it. All right. Here's World PvP Zerg. Zerg busting and farming. Let's see. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just not seeing anything that's, like, really kind of crazy here. Uh, check out Night Online, ESL PvP. Well, like, 2013? Well, yeah, all right. This one's from two years ago. So this is slightly more recent. What is going on, guys? My name is Matt Alive. Welcome to... Listen, listen. What's your name? Matt R. Alive. You're having the same problem that I, I'm having. You're trying to comb over all your hair to one side so it doesn't look like you're bald, and then you're pushing this hair forward to where it hides the receding hairline. I, I see it, man. And then, like, you haven't showered in a couple of days, and so, like, it's kind of separating, and it's, like, greasy because, like, of your forehead. Trust me, bro, this happens to me every single week. Uh, you need to cut your hair shorter. Like, I mean, you just need to cut your hair shorter. Like, trust me. Like, you'll, you'll be happy whenever you do it. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to help the guy out. Three, two, one, water, blast, blast, blast. Blasting. 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 Okay, dude. This is yeah. This is actually kind of funny to see. All right. Servers ain't crashing at least. Hey, that's very true. Okay. All right. So that took about ten minutes, and now he's pissed off. So uh, I, I don't know. Like, obviously, this does look pretty cool, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, like. The way that I, I judge games and the way that I look at it is that I look at like the end lazy peon vid okay dude. Alright.
why Old School RuneScape is one of the best MMORPGs to play in 2018. I mean, guys, I really like chug a Dr. Pepper. I'm actually out of Dr. Pepper. I can't chug a Dr. Pepper, unfortunately. If I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to watch this. And then we're going to do the Orgrimmar raid, okay? That's what we're going to do. Can we agree on that? Is it, is it, does, 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 does we agree? Does we agree? Okay. That, that's an agree. Just a second. I'm going to read these. Go over two questions. I'll be down to answer any of them. Thanks for video exposure. Yo, dude. Thanks for making a video. I appreciate it. Thanks for the seven, man. Appreciate that a lot. St. Julian, uh, Butterscotch, and uh, Ayob, thank you guys all for the resets. I appreciate that. Big up on Yasma Comover. Hey, dude. I try my best. Down to Earth, Guild Wars 2 is lacking content in a way that is filled with repeatable content. There's no vertical gear progression if you want to be OP and super badass. And infinite, infinite gear progression. Sorry. Arcage is the game. But no PvP content and a lot of grind. PvE content and a lot of grind. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Orphia, thanks for the $13. Appreciate that. LMAO, thanks for the 5 Appreciate that. Have you seen Oath on Kickstarter? Oh, well, you know I haven't. Let's. You know what? You know what I haven't done? I haven't reviewed a Kickstarter program. I'm going to do that right now before we watch the video. Well, let, let, let's see what, what's going on with Kickstarter. Oath by Ready Up Studios. Let's see here. Okay. So it's basically uh, Ashes of Creation, except it's like pixels, okay? It's like Zelda Ashes of Creation. They've raised $56,000. Uh, all or nothing will probably be funded if it reaches its goal. About Oath, weather systems, global farming systems, advanced continent. Okay, so this is all the other stuff that they've got made here. You're able to make boats. Okay. Oath is a free-to-play open-world action combat sandbox MMORPG from Ready Up Studios built with the powerful Unreal Engine 4. It requires action-based combat. All right. Hmm. Uh, that's a lot. We'll look at the video. Okay. I don't like the cartoon graphics. Hey guys, welcome to the Oath Kickstarter, a new action combat sandbox MMO from Ready Up Studios. Shut down. I'm one of the developers working on Oath, and you may know me as Ethan from our Discord server. Okay. We decided to do things a bit different than other MMO Kickstarters. We see a lot of companies making Kickstarters with little or no gameplay systems actually developed, just some ideas or some Makes cool sense. concept art, or they have people working there who are really known in the industry. But since we are a new studio, we wanted to do things a bit different, so we decided to invest in making the core gameplay systems first, and then a Kickstarter, so we have something to show off. So during this video, we are going to show some of the core features that we've been working I don't know. It's the same as like every other MMO, like has these red circles around, around the mobs, and I, I don't like it. Graphics are a placeholder, you can see what they say in the description. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, it depends. Like, what's the game really going to look like beyond this? I, I don't know. Like, it, it's a little bit too cartoony for me to be, like, super excited about it. Okay, well, watch this video, then we'll do the Orgrimmar raid. Let's get it done. Watch Perplexity 5. Yeah, you said that 50 times, bro. Shut the fuck up. I get it. I'm not going to watch the another... I, I hate watching PvP videos. Like, I, I, I hate watching PvP. They're so boring to watch. Like, it's like, it, it's, I, I don't know what's more boring to watch, a PvP video or a music video. It, it, it's so hard to choose. Like, some of the WoW PvP videos are, like, okay to watch because you can think back of, like, how, how it used to be. But generally, I think they're both, like, really, really boring. 